Thank you for joining me. I'm Gord Long. A reminder before we begin, do not trade from any of these slides. They are commentary for educational and discussion purposes only. Always consult a professional financial advisor before making any investment decisions. The purpose of the audio slides is to talk about the areas that are not updated in your monthly analytics and technical analysis report. This is based on our annual cycle as outlined on the subscriptions page on our site. We intentionally keep the technical analysis charts to the subscriber reports so as not to confuse them with the drivers operating behind them. Drivers in the long term are primarily the fundamentals, in the intermediate term risk, and the short term is about confidence and sentiment. This month I'd like to update you on what our structured investment approach at matasii.com is signaling. I would ask you to bear with me initially as I need to first outline some basic approaches we use as cornerstones for our analysis so you can better assess our conclusions at the end. As such, I would like therefore to cover the following subjects outlined here. What a lot of individual investors don't fully appreciate, but institutional investors do, is that often coming problems in the equity markets are telegraphed in advance via other markets. Specifically, shifts in the currency markets trigger movements in the bond market, which in turn results in moves in the equity market. The currency market trades over five trillion in volumes on a daily basis. The gorilla-sized bond market is much smaller than the currency markets, but still massive in comparison to the global equity markets. The equity markets are relatively small in total comparison. If nothing else, the sheer volumes dictate this but it is more important than just that. You might want to think of this relationship in this way as shown in our illustrative dog example graphic to the right. The currency markets, like a thinking brain, identifies imbalances and often changes first. Then as money or currency flows start to shift, the body starts to react with motion and momentum. It is not unusual for the equity markets to be the last to move. In many ways, the equity markets are more emotional and sentiment oriented rather than analytical like the other markets. Like a dog wagging a tail, it moves based on how the dog actually feels about something. As I've often stated at the beginning of these long wave videos, the longer term equity markets are about fundamentals in the intermediate term risk, but in the short term, they're about sentiment and confidence. The highly successful investor Warren Buffett often describes the market as a slot machine in the short term, while being a weighing machine in the longer term, a slightly different way of, express, of expressing similar observations. But this sequential process has been changing with the world's financial markets becoming globalized and now reacting much faster. The global macro has become much more important which we discussed in the June Under the Lens video entitled Macro Investing in an Era of Political Discord. Credit has always been important to markets, but now credit is global. This, along with the fact we have shifted to an era of creditism from capitalism has further made the global role of the credit cycle critically important. However, credit is not really a market. Yes, there are credit default swaps and other instruments that allow you to trade it, and to some degree measure it, but the area is so vast and complex with so many variables, it's hard to easily capture its nuances. I didn't say it wasn't possible or not being done, but certainly not by individual investors or small institutional market participants. This is the purview of the major international banks and global insurers as well as hedge funds. Today, the first mover is the global credit cycle not individual domestic business cycles. A way to think about this is the credit cycle has become the sensory input to the brain. It smells out, sees, and hears changes first. This may have always been the case, but today it is a demonstrable reality. I have shown this graphic before in case you have any doubt about the importance of credit and the global shift to creditism, which my colleague Richard Duncan has written extensively about. We are in an era dominated by consumption-led economies which no longer are driven solely by the capitalist underpinnings of savings and investment. Today's practical investment approaches and methodologies must now incorporate this or be continuously blindsided by change and therefore miss profitable investment opportunities. 
We nibbled at this subject in our recent March Under the Lands video entitled Global Liquidity, Credit, and Flows. We encourage you to review this video if you haven't already. We don't have time in this session to discuss all of its materials. The illustration gives you basic building blocks of the credit cycle in which those in the credit business participate. Those participants are dominated by bankers. Global liquidity is dominated by the central bankers and their monetary policies. Credit and debt is dominated by domestic and shadow bank lending participants. Flows is the purview of the international banks and global hedge funds. Credit is not really a centralized exchange traded market, though there are many trading instruments which fall under different parts of the credit field. I have abbreviated here only a few of the many components under each of our major captions. The list, however, is huge, especially when you consider the roll-up involving all the major countries of the world. This is not a field for the novice or, or someone with limited time and means. So what do you do about it? This is one of the reasons we started MataSII.com, to build a platform that allows smaller investors to get a better handle on, on credit, currencies, and bond markets in such a way as to assist with developing their equity investment strategies. We attempt to distill a lot of the complexities into understandable and actionable investment approaches, starting with credit. We endeavor to create roadmaps to better identify what is critically important for you to watch and track. These macro maps are not pulled out of the air, but are based on a very structured process. Credit, currencies, bonds, equity, shown at the bottom, is only one component of our macro analytics, for example, which in turn is only one part of our process, methodology, platform, and investment theme structured process approach. We certainly don't get everything right, but we have found we are seldom truly blindsided by something. We may miss some strategic investment insights, we currently have eight, but then we are more often than not in the important ones early. We additionally overlay generational cycles with business cycles, with monetary policies, with fundamentals, risk, and sentiment to arrive at probabilities of occurrences. Our technical analysis and proprietary HPTZ or high probability trading zones then gives you triggers and targets to assist you in developing your own investment strategy further. We don't tell you what your investment strategy should be. We do the research and analytics. You do the rest. I didn't mean to make this a Mata SII commercial, but we have so many new subscribers and we sense many don't fully appreciate the reason for why the MataSII.com site is so extensive or how to fully use it effectively. We certainly wish that we could make it simpler and less involved, but the investment environment today simply doesn't allow this to happen. Initially, Matt SII was actually three separate sites that were amalgamated, the Gordon T. Long Market Research site, the technical analysis site called Triggers, and a private proprietary site structured on what were termed Strategic Investment Insights, or SIIs. Let me now share a few charts of what all this research is presently telling us. Because this video will eventually be shared in a time-dated fashion in the public domain, we refer subscribers to the subscriber side of the site for more detailed analysis. For non-subscribers, we encourage you to explore the public side of the site for further introductory and free research on what we're discussing here. Starting with credit, we currently see a high probability of the following occurring. One, Yields have more to run and will likely top in Q4 somewhere south of 3.5% on the 10-year U.S. Treasury. Investment grade, specifically triple B, and high yield yields will increase their yield spreads and march higher into the coming recession and global slowdown shown on the right in gray and red. Equities are likely to finally top in late 2018 or Q1 2019 with the S&P at approximately 3,050 as central banks withdraw liquidity. Of course, as markets deteriorate, you can fully expect the central bankers to increase liquidity, but it won't work this time around as it has in the past. 
over leveraged corporations and the dramatic increase in what I refer to as zombie corporations will not be able to finance their debt and will be forced to then push their prices higher, called inflation. Bankruptcies, bailouts, and government guarantees will not be sufficient to stop this as we head into 2022. The debt supercycle will be demonstrably over by then, and the mistaken policies of unsound money and fiat currencies will need to be reckoned with. The U.S. dollar is critical to the timing of all of this. Global de-dollarization has begun and will only accelerate through 2020-2022. In the near term, however, we see dollar strength increasing rapidly due to a pronounced euro dollar and global dollar shortage. This is primarily driven by the $9 trillion in U.S. denominated emerging market debt and the perfectly predictable echo boom we outlined as inevitable five years ago in these videos, and you can look at them in the macro analytical archives for them. A compounding flight to safety in the U.S. dollar will eventually reverse by 2020, 2022, because of the momentum with de-dollarization. Expect the IMF to become a dominant policy setter as the world shifts to a multipolar form of governance as the U.S. dominated unipolar world environment comes to an end with crashing entitlement funding problems further accelerating de-dollarization. In the near term, we have witnessed the U.S. dollar steadily fall since Trump was elected, which has helped U.S. asset values. This drop has recently reversed, exactly as our ellipse drawn over two years ago predicted it would. The U.S. dollar is rising and now causing major problems for emerging markets, which will soon spill over into the unsound and fragile EU banking system. We currently expect a consolidation in the U.S. dollar before advancing higher over the next 12 to 24 months. This is likely not to be good for the precious metals market. The bond market has also been following our model since the Trump election victory. Rates have rapidly risen to the critical 3% range on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note. We see a near-term pullback consolidation in rates before marching higher to possibly the 3.5% range. This whole movement, however, is an ending diagonal pattern, a corrective formation in long-term falling real rates. It foretells of much lower, longer-term sovereign rates in the late 2019 and onward. In the short term, the U.S. equities have completed a consolidation triangle pattern, which is a classic continuation pattern of the existing trend, which is upward. We presently need to see the dotted line shown here on the Dow Jones Industrial Average chart to be decisively broken to confirm the continuation pattern. A similar pattern is seen in the S&P 500. A pullback is part of a wave two is highly likely. However, this is only part of a final five count wave still ahead, which will likely end at its Fibonacci target of approximately 3,050. All of this, of course, is subject to change and is why you need to monitor our posts and live charts, real-time charts, on our site. Though we feel there is more to go in the equity markets, remember, the last 5% is always the most expensive. Our strategic investment insights are therefore presently focused on bond, credit, and currency investments for all the reasons we initially discussed. Our equity insights are now more about positioning for high probability shorting opportunities. Check out our watch list for ideas. These are not recommendations, but only instruments to pay particular attention to. Our analysis nailed the Deutsche Bank collapse for those that have been following our lenders, SII. If you haven't already reviewed our recent long wave release on follow the cycles, we encourage you to do so. We are in the midst of completing important generational cycles, which will dominate global markets in the decade of the 20s. As I often do, never forget that the powers to be will continue to print money to solve these and any and all problems until such time as no one will take the money or it is of no value that you can be assured of. That day is still in the future. So take advantage of this truism as it currently unfolds. Investing is always easier when you know with relative certainty how the powers to be will react or be forced to react. Your chances of success go up dramatically. 
I'd like to take a moment as a reminder, do not trade from any of these slides. They are for educational and discussion purposes only. Thank you for listening. And until next month, May 2018, turn out to be an outstanding investment year for you and your family. And I thank you personally for listening.